Hi, hello, it's me, Unkempt Snuggle Pepper, back for another episode of Art Critiques from Reddit. Just a reminder, if you like this video, be sure to give a like and a comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And link down in the doobly-doo, you will find links to my webcomic, my Etsy store, and buy me a coffee. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We have this creepy gal walking right into our nightmares. Uh, definitely did well with creepy. Definitely did pretty good with uh, the, the overall glow and using that bright fuchsia color. Uh, I'm going to try to break this down from larger art element into smaller art element. So I'm going to start with the composition. I love that she has these bright glowing eyes and I like the use of the purple in the frame. I'm guessing the frame was put in place because you weren't sure exactly what kind of background to put there. Backgrounds are hard, at least for someone who enjoys drawing characters. It's one of the things that I avoided for a very long time. I highly recommend trying to fit them inside of environments because that's going to give you your light source. And I know that's much easier said than done. Another big compositional element I think that happened was all of this, all of this bright magenta is so bright compared to her and it detracts from the fact that her eyes are supposed to be glowing. So if we take that and we, we bring down the saturation, she's going to stand out more and her glowing eyes are going to stand out more. And I think how I want to do that is by creating a new layer, going down to black, and then with a pen, I'm just going to fill that all in. It's easier than making a selection. All right, so I have most of that magenta filled in. What I'm going to do next is make the layer type saturation, and that's going to bring it down to black and white. I don't need it desaturated that much. Just a little bit. See, yes, a more desaturated medium tone purple is going to make her pop out a lot more and the frame around her pop out a lot more than having the bright magenta in her eyes as well as behind her. Another thing I would note on composition is to use a larger canvas so that you're not using a single pixel in order to draw. So if we take, I'm going to remove this layer, I'm going to bring this layer down. I'm in Clip Studio Paint right now. This brush is 12 pixels. So I know I can do thicker line work for her face. And I have my pressure sensitivity on. I'm thinking you may not be working on a device that has pressure sensitivity, in which case I highly recommend in digital art looking at a Huion, which can be less expensive and hook up to the computer, or if you have an iPad, the i the eye pencil, Apple pencil, or going with traditional line art. And then we can show where her nose is. I think you used a few too many lines to define the facial features, but then weren't sure of all the places to put the lines. It appears that her mouth is cracking. So yes, I would put lines there. I would also do uh, whenever we smile, it pushes back our cheeks, so I would include the lines in there. And with the eyebrow lines, I would be, I would, I would, I would simplify it a little bit more. The purpose of line work is to make things a lot of times more simple rather than more complicated. You don't necessarily want to sketch out every detail. So I think that'll give us more of a dynamic, complete line art look is by using 
thicker lines overall and having pressure sensitivity available. If for some reason you don't have pressure sensitivity available, I, I would also recommend just overall a larger pen size. So on the anatomy, I think there are a few things in the face that I'm going to get to in a little bit. But with the hands, if this is her thumb, then her pointer finger would not be going off to the side, but rather pointing straight down like this. And then her claw-like nail would be there. And our next finger would be slightly to the side. And so on. That's the biggest anatomy error that I, I noticed was that her hand seemed to be at a, a strange angle for making the claw. I highly recommend on that uh, to either use a mirror or take a picture of your hand up next to you like that so that you have a reference. It's hard to find references exactly in the position you need them. And I've gotten back in the habit of if I need to draw something, I use myself as a reference. I'm going to also put under here how to render hair. Uh, I see you know that it comes in clumps and not to draw individual strands, so that is good. I'm going to focus on this section right here. So with my, my lines, I would make thicker lines on the, the bigger areas. And then if you do wish to render things, I would then determine that. Personally, I prefer that when I use line art, I'm going to use cell shading, mostly because I have a webcomic and it just takes too long to do a lot of rendering for every single panel. If I'm going to fully render hair, then I don't worry about using lines at all. But the first thing I'm going to do is take my shadow color, kind of blend all of this out. Right, so we have our, our darker color. And that's going to fall over the entirety of the hair. As I would start with that base color. And then where you want the highlights, that generally tends to be more of a band than along every strand. And then as the hair wisp out, that highlight is going to blend into that shadow color. And that's where, going, where we're going to get more of the definition between the locks. So that's one of the easier ways to render hair. They do make hair type brushes where you have more strands. But I want to caution on using these that for me, it's adding a little bit of detail that is easier than going through with a single stranded brush. But I know it's very easy to get lost in a uh, hair type brush and begin overusing it to where you can tell that it has been used in the hair rather than something that is naturally integrated into a piece. And then the very tippy tip of that highlight, let me put along here. There. So that reads more as hair. And with it flying in all sorts of different directions, you have lots of things going on. So you'll have to do various studies of what hair does when it's flowing. And then I'm going to move on to her face. Don't be afraid to use hard edges. I can tell you know the face needs certain values in certain places. You just aren't comfortable with where all of those places are yet and what needs hard edges and what needs soft edges. Uh, her flesh tone is a little too yellow. If you're going for dead, then you want to lean towards a grayish blue. And if you're trying to go for uh, a normal skin tone, 
she is much less yellow than this. She should be this, um, she should be more of a pinkish color. So what I'm going to do is go in with a pink, make another layer, and soft light. And then I'm going to focus on the nose for this. I would push our shadows just a bit darker for the sake of drama. And I would go back to not using a hairbrush. That would help. So I've merged that down. I'm going to increase this shadow, moving it towards red. And we're going to work on the nose. I know the nose is also uh, going to be a bit warmer and a bit more saturated than the rest of the face. And I would avoid going this far towards white. This white only exists in very small parts of the skin. And even then you're going to have a, a bright light. So really our, our highlight should, should be a little less bright. And less saturated because you're going you're almost at pure white bring that white just a little bit and I'm not full opacity I'm pressing pretty lightly there and then this also increases the contrast which increases the drama which increases how scary she looks And then with the glow of the eyes, we can then make that stronger. Because that's going to light up here and over here. We'll go back in with another color, get those eyebrows in. Now hair's pretty reflective, so a lot of that eyebrow is going to come in with that pink. I would also note that with the teeth, you kind of hit in between two different versions of what you could have done. You could have outlined all of the teeth or you could have shaded the teeth, but you kind of go in where you aren't quite sure which one to pick. So these teeth back here are going to be much darker. Now, I personally don't draw individual teeth unless I'm about this close to the head and the head is what I see. And even though it's gray, we're still going to be bringing in... Even though it's gray, we're still going to be bringing in a bit of color. Because nothing is ever pure white or pure black. It's always a bluish black, a brownish black. When I paint uh, traditionally, as much as possible, I avoid using black. Instead, I usually mix a ultramarine blue with a burnt umber. So there, now we have more teeth. We also don't quite get this far into red when going into the gums. They're much more of a pink. Let's bump up that scary a little bit. Let's give all of her teeth a bit of a point. This is just personal preference. I'm just having fun. And we'll make these guys longer. Ooh, scary. All right. So yeah, with the glow, we definitely want more of that reflecting. And that's going to break some of the rules that we see with uh, traditional faces is that this is one of the the deeper recesses of the face that's where we're going to be seeing the most amount of shadow but if her eyes are glowing then that's where we're going to be seeing that that glowing light and the skin is fairly reflective it's going to be picking that up so i think we can definitely exaggerate that glow a little bit another note i think 
You're going really bright, but you aren't getting really light. So I think, I think I would go a little bit more that direction. Showing that that is a glow. I will also make the note that the forehead after the eyebrows tends to straighten out that these lines, these lines wouldn't have gone that direction. She would have had lines more like that. So those are my notes. Those are things that I, I would continue to study and continue to look at in your next drawing. Some of this is kind of opinion and personal preference on, for example, on when I would use cell shading versus when I would try to render something. Using a thicker brush than a single pixel um, or as thin as you, you were is kind of personal preference. There's a there's two different schools of thoughts on it, really. One says bigger things get thicker lines, and as you get into smaller details, you slowly go into thinner lines. And another school of thought says wherever there's a shadow, you're going to use a thicker line to indicate that shadow. My problem with the second one is there's also a reflective light or a bounce light that negates that the very edge is going to be the darkest of an object, at least in a sphere. So those are some things to look into in, in, you know, how you want to go forward with using line art or if you want to use line art. I would also recommend checking out um, more videos on how to render hair. I think you have a good start. You aren't uh, drawing each individual strand, which can be pretty tempting, but you aren't quite catching where the highlights fall in hair. Yeah, I think you should definitely keep doing art. I think everyone should do art. But you definitely have some some basics that you are getting into. There's just more, there's more to go. Secret, there's always more to go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, uh, be sure to give me a like, a comment, a subscribe. I also have a buy me a, a coffee if you want to help support the channel. I should have some stickers ready on there soon, too. Uh, with all that said, hope to see you next time.